Okay, first of all, you have to know I have to record this the second time because the first time for some reason OBS did not capture my screen. So I was just talking to the microphone and when I was trying to do the montage and cut the clips, turned out I don't have any video. So here goes to the second time recording of this amazing second version of an impact frame. So before we get to the step-by-step -step tutorial, I want to give you a quick breakdown of what this effect looks like. So we obviously have the background, which is a tube with noise moving back and forth. Then we have our character with an animated shader that takes over the whole mesh. And then lastly, we have a plane with a glass material that is animated and this is where the whole effect actually comes from. As you can see from different angles it looks a bit different but with the camera looking at it perpendicularly it looks like this really really cool kind of horror style anime effect. So let's start with a new blender scene. I already have my skeleton imported and the only difference between this and the previous project is that I rotated it on the x-axis so that it doesn't face the camera on the upward position but rather it's a little bit tilted towards the camera. And so yeah, the first step actually is the camera itself. So shift A and add a camera. Now hold down Alt and click R to reset its rotation and then click R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees so that it's facing our mesh perpendicularly. Now move it like so, so that our mesh is roughly in the middle of the frame. If you want to check how the frame looks like, simply click zero on the numpad and make sure that the mesh is in the center of your frame. Now, if you want to have this one-to-one -one aspect ratio, Sure, you have to go to the output settings and change the resolution x and y to the same value in my case it's 1080 also make sure that the frame rate is at around 30 fps because in my experience it gives off the best result now if you want to adjust this camera you can stay in the camera view and then click n to get this ribbon check camera to view and now as you move around in the viewport you see that the camera gets adjusted as well the last thing that we need to do is go into the camera settings and change the focal length to something higher like maybe 80 which is gonna distort our mesh a little bit more and give us this effect of the head being much closer than the rest of the body. Now when you're happy with your frame composition, simply uncheck this camera to view and we can start by adding some background to our scene. So let's drag in another viewport, click 0 to get out of the camera view and shift A to add a mesh cylinder. Now the resolution I leave up to you but I will leave it at 32 and click R X 90 to rotate it again on the X axis by 90 degrees. Now click tab and go into the edit mode and delete the front and the back caps of the cylinder. You can exit the edit mode and now position it roughly behind our mesh and also stretch it on the y-axis quite a bit move it backwards and here in this viewport make sure that the whole camera frame is being filled by the background mesh but at the same time make sure that the cylinder is long enough so that as you see as we are making it longer and longer the back side gets smaller and smaller so just make sure that it's hidden behind your mesh so that you don't have any see-through areas on your final frame now you can right click and shade smooth the whole cylinder to get rid of this faceted look now still with the cylinder selected let's change the viewport to shader editor. Now click new to get a new material, delete the principled BSDF and add a emission shader. Now for those of you who watched the first impact frame tutorial, you may already be familiar with what we're gonna do because it's gonna be very similar but for the new audience I will go through it step by step anyway. So first of all let's add a noise texture and with the noise texture node selected click ctrl T to get a mapping and texture coordinate nodes. If this trick doesn't work for you go to the edit preferences add-ons and look for node wrangler and make sure that it's enabled. It comes pre-packaged in blender so you don't have to download any external files. Now with this done, in the texture coordinates change it from generated to object and holding down ctrl shift and click on the noise texture we can preview how it looks like. If you don't see any preview in your viewport make sure that you're in the render preview mode. Now you should have something like this and in order to give it more anime stylized like look we need a color ramp node in our shader editor. Plug it right after the noise texture and change the interpolation from linear to constant. Now as you drag the white value down you should see some pattern emerging but as you can see it doesn't really look like the anime action lines so in order to adjust that we need to edit the mapping node scale values so in the previous impact frame tutorial you've seen this three node setup that lets you control the scale on one value but just to show you that it's not completely necessary and it's just the quality of life thing we can edit the value directly in the mapping node so take this scale z value and bring it all the way down almost to zero maybe something like 0 0.1 so that you have this nice straight action lines and now in order to adjust the look of them in the noise texture bring up the detail and also bring in the roughness a bit as well and what this does it gives it this nice rough almost pencil like drawn lines to it which I think suits great the aesthetic that we're going for and if you want to have those lines thinner and more of them simply bump up the scale of the noise texture to something like maybe 15 and now the balance between the white and the black areas of the noise is controlled through this color ramp black and white values so choose something that suits you I will leave it at something like this and just like that you have this very simple 
whole setup for the background. We can plug it now into the emission and then the emission into the material output surface. But now the thing is, we want this to be an animation sequence, but if we click play, then we see that nothing is happening on the screen. And that is because we need to animate this noise through the shader. So go back to the mapping node and find a location Z. And as you can see, when you change this value, the action lines either get pulled backwards or shot into the camera. And now there's multiple ways to animate this value. One would be to make a keyframe on, let's say, the beginning and the end. But I feel like the more comfortable and easier way is just to use drivers. So type in hashtag frame, which is going to take the value of the frame that the animation is currently on and just put it in this field. We can test how it looks like. So you can see the animation is on the first frame. The value is one. As you click play, it's getting changed. So you can see it's getting updated accordingly. And because it's moving too fast, we need to make it a little bit smaller. So simply divide it by something like 150 and that should do the trick. You can see now it's moving much slower, but for my purpose, I will leave it at something like 40. So it's moving quite fast, but not too hectic and we can still see what's going on. Now with this out of the way, the material for the background is basically done. The next thing is our character. So simply select the skeleton and click new to add a new material. Again, delete the principled BSDF and add a emission shader. The reason why we're using the emission shader is that we won't be using any lights in the scene and emission shader just lets us see everything clearly even though the scene won't have any lighting setup. So now very similar to the first impact frame, we will start with a Fresnel node and also add a color ramp right after it. Let's connect it like so and preview how it looks like. As you can see we have this nice highlights of the geometry but to give it this anime look we need to again change the interpolation from linear to constant. Bring in the white value and also click this plus button to get another color stop in our color ramp. Now move it like so so you have this black white black gradient and adjust it until you're happy with the result. So I will put it to something like maybe this so the white value is used only as a highlight on our mesh. Now the next thing is the red outline that you could see in the previous scene. So for that we will need a layer weight node and another color ramp as well. And now you may think why did we use this Fresnel node if in the layer weight you also have the Fresnel output. And that is because of this index of refraction value. As you can see when you change it you have a totally different results of the look of your mesh. So feel free to adjust it and experiment with it as you want. But I will leave it as default for now. And in this layer weight we will use a facing. Now let's preview this color ramp, change the interpolation again. And as you bring in the white value you may think hmm but this looks almost exactly the same as the Fresnel node. But truth is that there is quite a big difference in how this output works. So feel free to try and compare. So with this value somewhere around here, let's change also the color from white to red. And don't worry too much about the position of this color stop because we will animate it anyway. Now the next step is we want this red outline to be on top of this shader. And in order to do that, we need to use a mix RGB node and connect the colors like so. And then if you preview that, you can see that the factor controls which input is gonna be on top. So in this case, we have the second color ramp and with the factor zero we have the first color ramp. Now what we want is we want the factor one but only where the red value is and so that is why we need to use the second color ramp as the factor but if we use it directly like this then you can see yes we do have the red outline only where the red outline should be but it doesn't look as red as here and that is because factor is a grayscale value and this red when translated into black and white value is not exactly white and that is why we need a math node to put in between the color ramp and the mix RGB factor, change it from add to multiply and let's multiply it quite a bit so that you see that this red is the same red as our original color ramp. Now in order to make sure that the output of this multiply does not exceed 0 and 1 values, we can check this clamp checkbox. And now just like that, the shader for our character is done. Let's connect the result of the mix RGB into the emission and then the emission into the material output surface. Now as you've seen in the previous scene, I had this red outline glowing. And if you want to have the same effect, you have to go into the render settings and make sure that the bloom is enabled. And then when you bump up the emission strength, you can see that the mesh starts to glow. But here is the little problem. With the red outline, also the yellow parts of the mesh glow as well and if you don't want this to happen you can go directly into the color ramp with the red value and as you click on the color you see that even though the value looks like it's on the maximum at 1, when you click on it and then edit the value by yourself to something like 5, you can see that now only the red outline is the glowing part of our mesh and that is exactly what we want. So let's adjust it a bit because now it's a bit orangey, let's make it more reddish. And so just like that, it's now time to animate this red because again, as you've seen, I had this effect of this outline growing gradually until it almost takes over the whole mesh, which is giving it this nice kind of creepy horror-ish look to it. So in order to do that, make sure that this red 
that value is all the way to the right. Make sure that the animation frame is on the first frame and now hover over this position value and click I to give it a keyframe. And now go into the end of your animation. In my case it's 120 frames. If you want to adjust it then change the value here. This basically says how long will the animation rendered be and so at the end frame of your animation bring in the red value to the final position that you want to have it in. So maybe something like this for me and again hover over the value and click I to add another keyframe. Now as you play the animation you should have this effect of this red outline taking over the mesh slowly and slowly. And just to make sure with this color ramp selected click A on the timeline to select both keyframes and then T and change the keyframe interpolation to linear because I believe it's Bezier by default and that is just not ideal. At least not for what I'm going for but feel free to leave it as you wish. And now with this done we also want our mesh to move up and down in this kind of wobbly motion to add a little bit of dynamicism to the whole sequence. So with the character selected, change the shader editor into graph editor. Let's also pause the animation and hover over your character, click I and choose location, which is gonna add a keyframe to the location of our character. Now let's open this object transform and select Z location. Then click N to get this ribbon, go to the modifiers tab and add modifier noise. Now what this will do as you click play, you can see that our character is now moving up and down, but way too fast and way too far, both up and down. And in order to adjust that, bring down the strength quite low, maybe to something like 0.06. And also if you don't want him to shake like this, but maybe have this a little bit ominous, mysterious uh, way of moving, you can bump up the scale quite a bit to something like 30. And then you see it's moving much slower, but also because of that it, gi it gives off much different vibe than before. So I quite like it, so I will leave it at this, but feel free to adjust those values to your liking. Now let's change the graph editor into the 3D viewport and the most interesting part of this tutorial and at the same time the most important one I guess, the whole appearing and distortion effect of our sequence. So shift A to add a mesh plane, rotate it again by 90 degree on the x-axis so that it's facing the camera perpendicularly and move it so that it is right in front of our character and nicely covers the whole animation. Let's pause it also and now before we move into the shader editor, there's few things we need to change in order for this to work. So in the render properties, first of all enable screen space reflections, open it up and make sure that the refraction is checked as well. Now with this done, with the plane selected, we can go into the shader editor and add a new material. It's a front plane and also delete the principled BSDF and add a glass BSDF shader. Now if you preview this one, you see that still it is not transparent and that is because we need to go to the material properties as well and in the settings, enable screen space refraction and with this done you should already have this really cool effect around our mesh and so the best part of this tutorial now is how easy it is to achieve the effect that you've seen in the previous scene basically all we have to do right now is to animate this index of refraction in our glass psdf so as you bring down this value you can see that we have this cool effect happening so again same as we did with the color ramp make sure that the animation is on the first frame change the ior to zero click i to add a keyframe go to the last frame change the ior to let's say 10 and then again I to add a keyframe and now as you click play you can see that we have this really cool effect going on and the last thing that may be a problem for you is for example here if we render this frame you can see that the background is this default grayish color and it doesn't really suit our scene that well so in order to fix that in the shader editor change from object to world and you have this background node simply change the color of the background to pitch black and now when you play the animation you can see that with the black background it looks so much better. I hope that you learned something you didn't know before or at least now you know how to make this really cool impact frame. Also hope it wasn't too hard to follow the whole tutorial and if you manage to create something really cool using this technique, I would really love to see that so make sure to tag me on Twitter, link for that is in the description. And today a little bit differently, I will not be uploading the blender scene that you've seen at the beginning of this video to Gumroad because I feel like it would be way more beneficial for you if you just made this effect yourself instead of just getting a finished file. And at the same time, doesn't it feel so much better to just make something by yourself and be proud of the work you did, you know? But I'm not sure if it's a good move, so let me know in the comments if you prefer to just get the finished scene from my Gumroad, but if you managed that far to the tutorial then I'm sure you're capable, more than capable, to create something like this by yourself. And also if you got this far into the tutorial, then you are exactly the person that I'm making these tutorials for. So I would really appreciate if you subscribe, enable the notification bells, so that YouTube may recommend you my new videos when I release them, and at the same time they 
may recommend my existing videos to other people that have similar interests to you. So I guess it's a win-win situation in this case. So I won't be keeping you much longer, enjoy the effect and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!